Try talking. Try talking. You'll get him. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reacts. It's idiots. I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. It's so juicy. It's a cup. Uh, and thank you for support us on Patreon. Patreon, no Patreon. Um, there's exclusive content on there. Everything that gets blocked is on there. True. There's quite a few things. Yep. Uh, it's cool to see Patreonic peoples giving us messages before you've put it up on the channel. Oh, yeah. And then I know, oh, I know what's going up right now. Yeah. I got insider information, pals. <laughs> Uh, but uh, this is called Geography Now India. This has been requested probably since the inception of the channel. And then uh, Jabby did it a few weeks ago. And then those requests always no, ramp up after bigger. he does some, sure. some stuff. But this it's it's 19 minutes, which is why we, wow. we haven't done it yet. Good grief. Uh, it's just because this, this place gets hot because I can't have the AC running while we're filming because it, it'll be loud. Uh, and so, yeah, so we have to do this early. Thank we have to you do this very, early in the morning. Much. So, we have finally encroached upon the giant India. Some of you have been waiting a long time for this episode. I'm just going to say straight it's up, like, you all know India is incredibly complex and diverse. Even Indians have trouble understanding their own country. Obviously, I won't be able to scratch even the surface in this episode, but I'll try my best. He's a lot, lot of you Indian geographers yes. have helped me along the way, so thank you. And that's an orange shirt. shirt. Let's begin. I like this energy. It's time to learn geography. I like this. <laughs> Everybody, I'm your host Barbie. This place doesn't even need much of an introduction. Everybody has heard of India. It's big, it's loud, it's yeah. colorful, and most importantly, it has a plethora of confusing territorial anomalies that I just can't wait to cover. Here we go. <laughs> saying, India is a place where everyone is in a hurry, but no one is ever on time. First of all, India is located in that. South Asia, right on the Indian and Arabian Seas and the Bay of Bengal, bordered by six other countries, so close to seven, but that land bridge between Sri Lanka got wiped away like 600 years ago by a cyclone. India is divided into 29 states oh, really? and seven union territories, That's with cool. the capital New Delhi, which acts as its own administrative unit, oh, located in the capital territory. Keep in mind, New Delhi is actually just the name of one of the districts in the capital territory, made up of 11. The largest city, however, is actually Mumbai, with New Delhi, Bangalore, or Bengaluru, and Hyderabad following after. However, the four busiest airports are Delhi Indira Gandhi International, Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji International, Bengaluru's Kempe Golda International, and Chennai International in the south. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. This is my favorite part of any episode we ever make. Territorial anomaly time. India is loaded with strange borders and deliciously complex demarcation lines. First of all, what exactly is a union territory? In the simplest way I can put this, union territories are places that are too distinct to be incorporated into a state, but too small to have their own local governments. The first one, of course, is the Delhi National Capital Territory, where the capital lies. Chandigarh is a post-independent city constructed to replace Lahore as the capital of the Punjab area after it was split up between India and Pakistan. Then you have the island territories, the smallest one, Lakshadweep, and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman Islands being home to one of the last uncontacted people groups on the yeah, planet, the one. Sentinelese tribe, whom have yes. been hostile to visitors I, I and are remember that. left alone. As well as the Nicobar Islands, which actually used to be like a short colony of Denmark. Leave Denmark. Leave Finally, yep, the three remaining should. territories are former European colony towns and ports. Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Daman and Diu, which are separated by about 200 kilometers across the Gulf of Kambat, and the most confusing Union territory, the French-speaking Puducherry, which is actually split up between four district cities across India. Karikal, Mahe, Yanaon, and Pondicherry. Pondicherry is strange because it has 11 enclaves within the Tamil Nadu state. Or in this area, you can also find the experimental hippie-ish commune with a little bit of controversy. My brain. Uh, don't forget, here, the eastern states, also known as the Seven Sisters, are connected by this incredibly narrow 27 kilometer wide pathway known as the Siliguri Corridor. This pathway is like a crucial artery that completes the India puzzle. Or so you would think. Now let's discuss the juicy stuff. Now in the China episode, I already talked about the disputed areas with India, such as Aksai Chin and Arunachal Pradesh. The latter pretty much just belonging to India as it's almost completely inhabited and operated by Indians. So let's move to the other disputes. Now as of 2015, the Bangladesh episode is already outdated as India and Bangladesh have finally come to an agreement over the frighteningly complex former enclave exclave dispute. In the end, India only lost about 40 square kilometers of land to Bangladesh and now only a few enclaves and exclaves exist. Now let's head 
north. Now, when you try to draw the shape of India, you might want to be careful which depiction you use. Some might use this picture, some might use this, some might use this, and those that don't really study very well might use this. The point is, <laughs> is like the most heavily militarized, diplomatically stressed out region on the planet. It's already had like four South wars Texas. in the past half century. Basically, India, Pakistan, and to some extent China Kashmir. all want the entire area for themselves, although it's more of like a Pakistan-India thing. In the China episode, we already discussed the Chinese disputes with India, so I won't cover those in this episode. If you want to learn more, just watch the China episode. But anyway, this entire the entire era was a former <coughs> domain known as the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir that was under royal Maharaja rulers all the way up until independence. Yes. Currently, this place is split up by this fenced this off part militarized line known as the line of control between India and Pakistan. Why is this? Well, in the quickest way I can put this, okay, the British are out, we get to take your land. Uh, no, we want to be an independent princely state. Uh, we're supposed to take your land, and the majority of your people are Muslim, just like us, even though your ruler is Hindu as well. Hey, India? Yeah? If you help me, I'll let you secede my territory to your land with autonomy. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Your problem now. I love how Mike played India. He totally represents India. Oh, and keep in mind, Pakistan's capital, Islamabad, is less than 80 kilometers away from all that drama. The line of control meanders wow. through the mountains until it stops at a point called NJ9842. This is where things get really crazy. That's a weird name. There you hit the Siachen mm -hmm. Glacier, the second longest non-polar glacier in the world, and this is pretty much the military. Dead military yep. After point NJ9842, you hit the actual ground position line, a series of military outposts that extend all the way to the Chinese border. That means everything in this area is ground zero for the Indo-Pak tension. And you know, the crazy thing is there's actually literally small towns of normal, regular civilians living in these areas high up in the mountains, many of which just go about daily life, going to work and raising their families. Otherwise, they have a river dispute with Nepal and various river islands disputed with Bangladesh. Outside of all the dispute stuff, though, India not only has the world's second largest road network and three of the world's top 10 megacities and their own space program, but they also have a copious abundance of landmarks and notable sites, way too many to list, but some of the ones that you guys, the Indian geography peeps, have told me to mention include places like the abandoned dungeon. Anushkodi Ghost City, Okanda Fort, the Four Pillars of Charminar, the Ajanta Buddhist Art Caves, the Allura Monolithic yeah, Ruins, awesome. Mandu Fortress, the Golden Temple, which feeds over 100,000 people a day, the Golgumbaz Mausoleum, really? the Kalavantin Durak Post, the Ruins of Hampi, the Hill Forts of Rajasthan, Chaturanjaya Hill, which is basically like a Look mecca like, for Jain, like the Temple of the Bodhi like Tree, Jan Mahal, Bangar Fort, the most haunted oh. place in India, Mahabat Makbara, and keep in mind, just like in China, you can find the Great Wall of yeah, India in Rajasthan. Yeah, There's also the Paritala Anjanea temple with the largest statue in India depicting Hanuman and at over 150 acres the Sri Rangan Ataswami temple the largest Hindu temple in the world. <laughs> Man there's also that building with the stuff in the thing whatever. Anyway we could go on for <laughs> centuries talking about India's rich constructed domicile but what it lies on top of is even more fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> now like don't make this mistake. Oh, I'm going to India. All I need are my sandals and sunscreen. Oh crap. <laughs> As a seven largest country in land area, India has a wide range of landscapes, climates, and elevations that all contrast from one part to the other. First of all, let's talk about the north. India sits on the Indian tectonic plate that essentially smashed into the Eurasian plate, which in return created the largest mountain the range Himalayas, in the world. The Himalayas. The Himalayas. Of course, it's so that it's estimated that the Himalayas grow about 2.4 inches or 6.1 centimeters every year. There's also where you can find Kanchenjunga, the tallest mountain yeah, in India, yeah. or the third in the world, right on the border of Nepal. Keep your eye on these mountains. These are pretty much the source of most of India's major rivers that give life to the whole country. That's why India takes these mountains so seriously. You can also find the largest natural lake, Ular, up in the Jammu Kashmir area. Below the Himalayas, you reach the North Indian River Plains, sometimes referred to as the Indus Ganga. This is the most fertile part of India where the most important rivers like the Ganges and its tributaries flow. Heading a little south, you reach the Satpura and Vindhya ranges that pretty much divide North India from South India. On each side, you get the West and East Ghat Mountains, which in return creates this massive triangle thing called the Deccan Plateau. This place is moderately forest, especially in the East, in the Chotra Nagpur Plateau. Plateau, where it's you so get a different. section of the swampy Sundarbans that they share with Bangladesh. Check out the Bangladesh episode. Head a little west and you get the dry tar desert along the border with Pakistan, as well as the Ran of Kuch known as the Salt Desert. And finally, the only active volcanic area would be the Adaman and Nicobar Islands. Look at the Barren Island with actual guys. conical eruptions and Bharatan having tame mud volcanoes. Now here's the thing, although India mud has a relatively volcanoes. high That's population cool. density, they do relatively well with maintaining their ecological footing. In fact, in 2016, they beat a world record by planting, yep. disputably, 50 million trees, trees in one yeah, day. They've that. also agreed to reforced about 12% of their country by 2030. The most heavily forested area being the, the seven sister states in East India. Now, one of the factors that contributes to this would be the fact that India has the lowest meat consumption in the world with the highest population percentage of vegetarians at around 40%, most of whom are lacto-vegetarians that consume milk products. By the way, in India, when buying groceries, this label means vegetarian and this one means not vegetarian. Nonetheless, the remainder of the population does typically eat some kind of animal protein, mostly in the forms of seafood or chicken, but almost never beef or pork unless if you are part of the Muslim or Christian 
minorities scattered throughout the West and East areas. Now, let's talk about the role of cattle, shall we? India has more cattle and livestock than anywhere else in the world at around 330 million. And it's interesting because since they have prevalent Hindu traditions, the killing of cows is illegal in many of the states except for a few, and each state has varying degrees of punishment for committing intentional cow slaughter. Keyword intentional. Cows accidentally get hit by cars all the time. Once a cow is too old to produce milk, it typically is released into the open to die naturally in the wild, ideally. Nonetheless, male cattle get it much worse as they are deemed as kind of useless. Some places use them as draft animals for labor. Some religious sects use them as sacrifices, but otherwise they are typically sold to the underground market for beef or hides. To this day, there are about six times as many female cows as male cattle in India. So that means, yeah, something's happening to the males. Nonetheless, India does have the third highest carbon emission rate after China and the US, fourth if you consider the EU. However, emission per capita, they rank pretty low at only about two kilotons per person. Contrast that with- The amount of information is getting us There are 94 national parks, 501 animal sanctuaries across the country where you can find some of the national animals like the peacock, the Ganges River dolphin, the king cobra, the Indian elephant, and the highest population of Bengal tigers in the world, right. which are all Bengal. highly protected. Bengal. India also has the most irrigated land in the world, which allows them to become the number one producer of multiple products like millet, bananas, lemons, limes, mango, 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 milk, butter, fennel, jute, and about 75% of the world's spices alone come from India. Oh, Speaking wow. of which, food! Typically you can find the staples yeah, roti in Japan, the same thing. and naan in the north, idli and dosa in the south, and everybody eats rice. The more commonly commercialized Indian but foods not that not really grew up knowing, like samosas, tikka masala, tandoori's, and my favorite Indian dish, palak paneer, these usually come from the yeah, northern delicious. of India. Mm. Seriously, India, you took spinach and made it fat. I love you guys. Otherwise, the West is mostly known for their chutneys and pickled foods, as well as beef, since there's a high number of Muslims and Christians. The South uses a lot more coconut and has some of the best curries, like poriyal, sambras, rasams, and tutus. And the East is known for having the best desserts, peda, mishti doi, rasgula, or shundai. Speaking of which, India is so diverse and complex that sometimes even Indian people need translators when going to different states. Yep. It's about to get 10 times more confusing in about three, two, one. Shashti Turo once said, in India, we hey, celebrate we the commonality of major differences. We are a land of belonging rather than blood. First of all, India has a population of about 1.3 billion people and is the second most populous country in the world after China with about 18% of the world's population. About 72% of the country is Indo-Aryan and a quarter are Dravidian, and the majority of the remainder are Mongoloid, Asian, and other people groups. They also use the Indian rupee as their currency, they use the Type C, D, and M plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. By the way, technically it's illegal for these banknotes to leave the country, but you guys have sent me a lot of them for fan mail for Fan Friday videos, so I don't want to go to jail again. Now keep in mind, those statistics that I just mentioned are incredibly generalized. Of the Indo-Aryan and Dravidian communities, there are about 2,000 different ethno-linguistic people groups in India with about 645 district indigenous tribes, 52 major ones. So obviously we can't cover them all, but what we do know is that the North is very different from the South. Right. For one, the North mostly speaks that. in languages that are all related to the Indo-Aryan branch with They're languages like Hindi, Bengali, Punjabi, and Gujarati, yes. whereas the South speaks a completely yes. unintelligible Dravidian branch with languages like Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Tamil. and Kannada. I thought it was Tamil. Canada. Otherwise, it's also Tibetan and Austroasiatic languages spoken. I want to know how much of these things he's pronouncing correctly. So how do they all, like, communicate with each other? Great question! Although India does not have an official language, there are 22 recognized national languages, and of these, two are the most prevalent, taught in schools and used by government officials, Hindi and English. And very often, these English. two are, like, mixed mid-sentence. It's weird. Don't be surprised if you hear someone speaking Hindi and then suddenly finishing off in English. It's, it's all like, about English, English, English. Of course, it's so all like, what this? And I was, like, trying to, like, why are you trying to do that? I know, right? And the washing machine, I told them, but I said, I'm going to get a Bob Saget with a chainsaw. Now, of course, let's discuss the one thing that goes hand in hand Bob with Saget. Yeah. Hinduism. Yeah. About 80% of India claims yeah. to be Hindu or at least part of the Hindu practicing community. Now, we don't have time to explain everything about the tenets and multi layered philosophies and practices of Hinduism. If you want to know, just talk to a Hindu person. But basically, one thing you do need to know is that Hindu driven ideologies pretty much dominate most of life in India, everything from family to business. You will see colorful, mesmerizing shrines, temples, statues, and rituals being performed everywhere, even in public. Oh, and the Bharat Mata. The mother of India statues are everywhere. She's like the symbol of India. The largest Hindu pilgrimage, the Kumela, happens every three years, rotating between four cities in which the adherents bathe in the Ganges River and enjoy a massive festival with tens of millions of people. Like, seriously, you can practically see it happening from space. Now, a controversial topic in relation to Hinduism would be the caste system, which is basically a belief that people are born into a socioeconomic life that they are destined to serve into. Today, however, the system is more fluid and loose from what it used to be from a long time ago. And thanks to economic reforms, anybody with enough drive can kind of move up the 
social ladder, regardless of birth. Nonetheless, India is home to every major religion in the world, even a few Jews, including the B'nai Menashe, an indigenous group that claim to be one of the In fact, even, even a few Jews. In fact, you even even a few Jews. Started, <laughs> even kicked off in Europe. As tradition holds, Cochin and the Vandalars <laughs> migrated around 1000 BC to trade uh, during the times of King Solomon. Like in 1580, Thomas the Apostle of Jesus Jews, arrived yeah. in what is now the state of Kerala to establish the first church in India. Today, most Christians are found in the southwest and far east Seven Sisters regions. India also holds the highest population of Sikhs, Jains, and Zoroastrians, mostly found in the north, and the second largest Muslim population in the world after Indonesia. Most Muslims are populated around the northwest areas by Pakistan or in the east by Bangladesh. Oh, and don't forget the Buddhists. In fact, Buddhism actually started in India. Today, the Dalai Lama even takes refuge in Tezpur in the state of Assam. Oh, that was a lot of information. Ah! Okay, so by now Seriously. you can probably get a grasp of how incredibly mixed and diversified <sighs> India's population is, but what exactly holds the country together? Well, for one, you kind of have to understand Indian history, which will take way too long to explain, but in the quickest way I can put it, Indus Valley, Maurya and Gupta empires, Southern empires, Golden Age, Middle Kingdoms, a ton of new religions come flocking in, the North fell to the Delhi Sultanate, the South became the Vijayanagara Empire, Mughal Empire starts, British East India Company, direct British rule, nationalist movements, independence, republic, economic liberalization in 1991, Money and time. here we are today. <laughs> Vijaya. <laughs> the used to be made up of around 500 His smaller hair. royal princely states, and when the British came in, they kind of exploited them to manage such a huge population. Although India is a democratic federal republic and the largest democracy in the world, the old royal families still exist today, and although they have no political power, they hold high positions of influence in their communities across India. Like so today, England, typically, you could meet someone that would be considered an Indian England prince or princess. Power, Nonetheless, yeah. the biggest thing that really united yeah. Indians in the past two centuries would probably be their hatred of British rule. It was kind of like, well... This is not cool. Yep. What do you say you and I work together in a end this thing? Essentially, one good thing you could say that came out of imperialism was that it kind of stopped all the internal squabbling and unified the groups towards one common goal, to get rid of imperialism. Today, Indians are just proud to be Indian. I mean, a Tamil soccer player can get cheered on by a Rajasthani. A Punjabi pop star can sell out tickets in Orissa. Speaking of which, all Indians love movies and music. India has the second largest film industry in terms of volume, pumping out nearly 2,000 films per year. Surprisingly, first, Nigeria pumps out more. Second. Our Wait, box Nigeria office revenue is pumps out at more? only about $2 billion annually Fun compared to Hollywood. Very it's very hard to but believe. still, it's impressive. And keep in mind, it's not just Bollywood, but it's also Tollywood, Gollywood, Kollywood, Pollywood, and so on. There's like 20 different woods in India. Oh, and like every movie in India has at least one scene where everybody breaks out in song, and there's almost always a happy ending. Unfortunately, mainstream not India true. has also put an aesthetic strain on the people stuff is as crap. it's almost become an obsession to be light or fair-skinned, causing people to go so I far as to buy skin aging products. Some other controversies older, include things like illiteracy being an issue in many parts of the country, especially in the rural areas. But I mean, come on, when your country has literally hundreds of different writing systems? Go figure. I mean, give them a break. Also, many of you guys, the Indian geography peeps, have asked me to bring awareness to the fact that India does unfortunately have some of the highest rates of human trafficking and child slavery. The government is trying to crack down and culture is slowly being reformed, but for now, it's a sad reality that still does exist. Hey, here at GN, we talk about the good and the bad. I'm just saying. Otherwise, sports do definitely tie everyone together as well, especially cricket, the national sport, even though they also Not used to do really well sport. in hockey. India also has a lot of their own indigenous sports like Dopkel in Assam, bull racing in Kerala, in Sukhnar, Rod, Pushing in Mizoram, <laughs> Malakamba, the strange pole yoga gymnastics the? team in the that's, south. That's Otherwise, me before people we film. from India or of Indian descent might include people like Siddhartha Gautama or the Buddha, Mahavir, Ashoka the Great, Prithviraj Chauhan, Aurangzeb, Shivaji of the Maratha Empire, Mohandas or Mahatma Gandhi, Indira Gandhi, Subhash Chandra Bose, Jawahar Lal Nehru, Rabindranath Tagore, C. B. Raman, Satyendra Nath Bose, Bhagat Singh, Dr. A. P. J. Abdul mm. Kalam, Shah Rukh Khan, Amitabh Bachchan, Amir Khan, Salman Khan, Priyana Chopra, Ben Kingsley, Sundar Pichai, Satya Narayana Nadella, A.R. Rahman, Sachin Tendulkar, Priyana and Mahendra Singh Dhoni. There's also literally millions of other famous people I missed out on. If you want to mention them, please, Think there's so. a comment section below. Use it. I can In tell meantime, you a bunch of famous people. We gotta finish this info marathon, shall we? You forgot Sartaj! Now, no surprise, India is huge and therefore has a huge international outreach when it comes to diplomacy. To almost everyone! except their immediate neighbors. First of all, countries with large population percentages of Hindus and Indians like Fiji, Guyana, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, Mauritius, and Malaysia typically stay close to India's roster of go-to friends. They enjoy cordial relations with trade. Now, the UK may have left on a sour note, but they still have a lot of ties to their former colonizer in terms of business and tourism. India is still part of the Commonwealth, not Commonwealth realm, there's a difference, and the UK has over 1.5 million citizens of Indian descent. As mentioned in the China episode, China is kind of like India's I'm only here to do business with you and nothing else friend. 
Ukraine, as drama still hasn't subsided in regards to the territory conflicts. Now, when it comes to the U.S., things started kind of sour back in the 70s during the Indo-Pak War of 1971, when the U.S. sided with Pakistan, their arch nemesis. Today, relations have cooled off. Mostly, the U.S. supports India's move towards democracy and is a key ally in the military conflicts in the Middle East. When it comes to their best friends, however, most of the Indians I talked to have said Russia and Bhutan. Russia because during the Indo-Pak Wars, Russia came in and supported them, and ever since then, each country has held a high position of respect for the other, especially as global superpowers. Bhutan and India signed a treaty of friendship almost immediately after independence. The two countries have shared interests and a currency pegged system as well. Bhutan even supported the annexation of their cousins in the Sikkim state into India as it gave a nice buffer of land from China's stake to their claim. In conclusion, you will not find anywhere else on earth like India. Thousands and millions of people inhabiting a colorful, True. majestic, green, slightly greedy at times, slab of earth, blessed and cursed in so many ways, yet wonderfully harmonized, mostly in a unity unlike anywhere else. In the end, that's India. Ah! Stay tuned, Indonesia is coming up next. I liked all the puns. <laughs> wow. Well, wow, that have you ever seen those things on the internet? It's called like the Too Much Information Challenge. Yeah. Where they feed you a bunch of information. Yeah, yeah, and see what you quiz. retain. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, have you seen the video about uh, uh, my Michael would know what this is because he showed it to me. It's like the history of the world in five minutes. Yes, 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 yes. That that one kills me. It's like from the beginning of the creation of the universe until present day with every single possible thing that ever happened in world history. It's brilliant. He's uh, This was way more engaging than I thought it would be for 19 minutes because of the speed at which he's going. He's going really fast. He's having a lot of information. Blah, 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 blah. However, I would love to know how much of his stuff is actually verifiably accurate because a lot of the things, not a lot, I some know. of the things I could pick up on that weren't. Yeah. And actually, kind of a couple of things pissed me off a little. Um, but uh, as, a, as a whole, dang. I want to see his teleprompter too. Yeah, and that was a lot. That was like four years of Indian culture and history wrapped into a 19-minute video. Yeah, and then not like I could remember. No, <laughs> no. And you, you can. And as always, let us know what was right. What yeah, was wrong. I, I just all I could think of was how many things are going to be picked up by stupid babies. I'm going to go. Well, actually, we're going to get a ton of comments of both supporting what he said and said, yeah, that was true. And then we'll get comments saying, no, that is yeah, not, not true. Somebody, exactly. somebody does this by the United States. And yeah, exactly. It's exactly. also about different perspectives as well. Depending but on we knew this already. It, you can take an entire lifetime oh, yeah. of studying India and you're never going to even scratch the surface. You just won't. No, you, just, you, you could just, you could take a lifetime just studying the architecture. Yeah. I did <laughs> love. I did love the part where you were showing us all like the ruins of different. Like, oh yeah. I, I would. That's one of the things. I, if we, if I like, had the opportunity to like tour India for months, um, which probably won't. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> have a family. Uh, but <laughs> if I did, I would love to just travel each different place and see like the one, the nature, but then also the old ruins, and that's 100%. always my favorite part about seeing anywhere. Yeah. Like, when I went to Ireland. I, we went and searched for old castles. Old things, and yeah. Just, and so like what I love to do. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's and like to touch, touch, just to be somewhere that's been around for hundreds or yeah. thousands of years and to touch it and know who else has been here and touch that and been around that. that I'm with you. That, that yeah. is and, and massive. And being one of the oldest civilizations in the world. Yeah. Um, Arguably is, the oldest in yeah. terms of total history. And it's quite funny how often civilizations argue about which civilization is the oldest. I know. Like when you go to Ireland, there's places that are considered to be the oldest right. in the world. In the world. Um, and, and then they, China I, says, wait a minute. And then Egypt yeah. says, wait a minute. And, yeah. India, and then India's there's like, hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the one who can't say anything is America. We're like, hey, wait, no, you guys got that. Unless you talk to the Native Americans. Then, yeah, then exactly. They, could, they uh, would have some information to go, yeah, well, actually, guys, before you got here. <laughs> <laughs> then you get into genocide and all that, and it's fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 Hashtag American history. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that was fun. Uh, yeah. Let us know if there's other videos uh, of, of information about any. I think we've done couple of uh, we've done more ads tourism ads yeah um which i'd love to do more of those yeah yeah i always love those but the informational ones as well yeah, just informational culture um, about particular regions really. i know there's ones that people have sent me about temples as well mm -hmm. learning about the different temples which i know nothing about i just know that you right. built the temple and it's cool yep uh, that's yep. the extent of my knowledge exactly that, right yeah uh, i'm sure it's for some religious reason but uh, yeah let us know some other videos like that i hope you stayed till the end because if you did uh Kudos to you, yeah. and I'm sure your chai is ice cold. <laughs> <laughs>